I would like to invite next Professor Parthasharati Bhattacharya of Institute of Respiratory Care and in, in, Institute of Palmo Care and Research to say uh, to illuminate us on his research activities and collaborative possibilities. Professor Bhattacharya, please. Thank you, sir. It's a great honor for me to come and talk here. At the outset, I must be very modest because, you know, after listening to Professor Guha and others, I feel I'm doing very, very small work. But nevertheless, I will try to present to what I have been doing. Before that, I would like to present that I am a self-styled commando. Means I do not work in government sector, neither in corporates. I am a small institute of my own, which I have started myself. And it's totally dedicated to research, education, and patient care. For the last over 10 years, we have been able to work on at least 20 different projects, make at least six patent applications, and we have developed few novel technologies to methods to treat certain diseases. Uh, we are trying to make some new treatment modalities as well. My association of IIT is just coincidental, and it started after my introduction to Gautam and Dr. Chakraborty, and after that it rolled on, and now I have got at least three consultants in IIT with whom I interact, and um, we have some work on the development of a new treatment of COPD, uh, biomarker development for COPD, and a new modality of diagnosing lung diseases. Before going to the right topic, uh, I just uh, want to share my view of seeing to medicine. Our body is just like an universe. And here, if we count 100 people sitting, there are 100 universes. Each universe is different. And it's all the signal and uh, you know, sensors and signal processing going on and on. I can um, remember one article I read in a popular newspaper way back in 1986. Uh, it actually described Dr. Triguna, one doctor, as an Ayurvedic expert from Delhi. He was invited to a U.S. university where he could diagnose renal stone with a predictive power of 85 to 86 percent. I don't remember the exact figure, uh, just palpating pulse. So what he was doing, he was sensing signals of renal stones available through pulse. So that art we had with us, we have forgotten that. And it was such an art that had to be taught just by subjective individual learning, teaching. So that is not feasible today, and we don't have those teachers, neither we are those students like 100 years back. So we have to make things objective. Another example is uh, I listened to a lecture to Dr. Professor B.M. Hegre, who showed us a finger was severed in an injury. And uh, after some days, there was a soft tissue at the tip of the finger, at the cut end. And that soft tissue was sent to different laboratories. And actually, nobody could give an answer what tissue it is. Some, one of the laboratories it wrote it a stem cell. And this patient was followed for some time somehow the finger was reconstructed automatically, spontaneously. Even the nail and everything came back to its original shape. So body has some system to recover. It is a disturbance in our body that leads to diseases. And body has signals, the body has understanding, the shape of the finger. I was just listening to you, sir. The blind man can take us across a busy road much easily than we can cross ourselves. So our body is not a silent uh, system. It is a thriving system. It tries to repair itself. We have to know where are the problems, how we can take advantage of our own system to work in the right fashion. We look outside for help, but body is sending signals every moment. Every moment from its radiation, heat radiation from the body, sound from the body, even the slightest movement of the body sends signals to the environment. We don't have sensors to pick them up. So incidentally, what happened, because I work in a very grassroots level, and I have to generate my electricity to light my own house, we thought that we'll go for a small, simple project of understanding lung sounds. And today, that's what I'm going to present to you. It's a very primitive work, but I believe it has got a fantastic prospect. If you see the history of allopathic medicine and count the discoveries, the discovery of stethoscope is a milestone. It was discovered over 200 years back by Lenek in France. And for 200 years, we are carrying that stethoscope on our neck and trying to understand patient's disease through auscultation. So let's see if that lung sound can be interpreted in a different fashion. 
this is the lung and these are the airways and you can see the sound is basically generated in the airways and it is transmitted through the lungs to the surface which we pick up through stethoscope and try to listen and understand absolutely subjectively there's no objective diagnostic parameter and this we preach our students for hours together we let them understand what are the different types of lung sounds what is normal lung sound what is abnormal lung sound what is a particular abnormality what does a single abnormality means and how to interpret it and form an algorithm of investigations to understand the disease so you see the part of it is subjective part of it is totally dependent on investigations and there are there are a host of investigations may be very costly sometimes ct scan mr scan pet scan etc etc there are two or three sets of investigations i can say one investigation is to understand the anatomy of the lungs the other investigation is to understand the physiology and the third is to understand the pathology so there are different subsets of investigations through which we finally try to come to a diagnosis and say well you have a asthma or you have a lung cancer you have a copd or you have interstitial lung disease but if we consider our system for any abnormality the lung sound is generated in a system in our lungs so the lung sound is probably going to be aberrated and if we can understand that aberration aberration we can perhaps pick up the disease that was the initial thought and we started doing on it i'm not going into details what i will show you that we we had to develop a sensor so that sound acquisition sensor was developed by dr gautam shah in his laboratory i would say it's not a very high fi but it's very simple and we used that we collected lung sounds from a host of normal individuals as well a host of abnormal patients where the diagnosis has been done with a gold standard investigations suppose you have a disease called interstitial lung disease where the lung goes fibrous shrunken and that is picked up best by high resolution ct scan we have used high resolution ct scan to diagnose that and that kind of diagnosis is gold standard for today's standard so these two sets of lung sounds were mingled together and was sent to dr shahas laboratory the first job was to isolate the noise from it the most important noise was heart sound if we collect sound from our chest the heart sound interferes with the lung sound and then you see the lung sound separately that job has been done very successfully the heart sound has been filtered the noise has been filtered then we saw pure lung sound how it looks on screen as waveform how it actually listens to because we can play it back and thirdly we have seen what are the important digital signatures or the characteristics of normal sound that has been done so we have collected specifically the digital signature of the normal lung sound and then if if you use it like a probe on any other lung sound if it doesn't match then there is some abnormality and we selected the digital signature of an abnormal lung sound this job is pretty difficult i don't understand anything of it and it's been done by his team uh, on several um, uh, statistical methods and finally i will just do the last slide so i have told him pictureize the lung sounds this has not been done earlier and this is a picture on the left hand side this is a normal lung sound as if a paper has been folded and if you see the two shapes are different the distribution of red is to green is different the blue line crossing the the folding folding part is different and if you see this bar here the lateral end is touching at the bottom of the bar below the bar and it's above the bar so any person we a layman can diagnose what is normal and what is abnormal this we tested on a group of doctors as well in lay persons and we could predict with 100% abnormality versus normalcy so pictureizing lung sound we could diagnose at least one disease what is the prospect of it there are two prospect to my mind firstly while doing this work we had developed some insight what we listen to is a very small spectrum of the lung sound there's a huge spectrum above and below and this is what is like a sea you can see the tip of the iceberg you can't see the the whole uh, glacier itself or whole ice so if we can analyze what is not seen what is at the bottom we can perhaps pick up diseases very early second second that in even in 2013 today i i work in rural areas as well as a part of my program we go to a area close to jharkhand and we cater to patients there 
there is hardly any access to modern medicine. The whole medicine has been dependent upon the local unregistered medical practitioners called quacks. And, uh, and there is, uh, forget diagnosis of interstitial lung disease, everything is tuberculosis. We are living in this reality. So in real world, if we can make a system through which we can diagnose people very easily of specific diseases without any, subjecting them to any costly investigation, that will be huge service to my countrymen and the, and, the, and, the, and the humanity itself. It's like seeing a tiger and a cow. If a layman has been given a small instrument and just he puts it on chest and he gets a picture of a tiger, then he says, well, there is a disease and he can easily send that to my mobile phone. That is possible. And through that, I can diagnose this gentleman has interstitial lung disease or COPD or asthma or something like that. There is another part of it, which I was just pondering when I was listening to Dr. Mondel, that uh, soldiers have high altitude pulmonary edema. How can you detect them early? It's fine if we have an instrument where, through which we can understand early signals of lung sounds very, very easily. Not everyone is de developing pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is something where even through under listening with a stethoscope you can diagnose. So if you can pick up lung sounds, we have a prospect of picking up early pulmonary edema and we can save lives as well. So with this I wish to finish what I see. There is a vast sea of collaboration between engineers and doctors. And what I feel today is that what we need is mutual understanding and respect. It's not that doctors sometimes boast that we are doing something great service, absolutely rubbish. Similarly, engineers have an idea that these doctors, they are absolute, you know, they don't have any objective idea. They speak vague, you know. Our science is really vague. It's not one plus one equal to two. But we must understand each other. And uh, I understand this could be beginning of a new era because we have tremendous scope of collaborating between us. And perhaps we can select out certain problems and solve them in our own fashion, which will be unique in the world. With this, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Bhattacharya. You have provided an excellent example of how engineers and doctors can work together. And if I look at this slide which you have over there, I think we have achieved the first objective here, and we are, we are sure of the second. And the third and the fourth, our director has already said that we are going to provide whatever support that is required. So I am now.